Hello everyone, kumusta po kayo? I hope na nasa mabuti kayong kalagayan. This time, I would like to talk about one recent decision of the Supreme Court. Ito po ay tungkol doon sa conviction ng akusado sa isang criminal case involving a violation of RA 9262, otherwise known as the Anti-Violence Against Women and Their Children Act of 2004. I have come to realize na halos magdadalawang dekada na pala tong batas na to. I have already discussed in our previous video yung tungkol sa marital infidelity, yung pangangaliwa o pagkakaroon ng kabit bilang isang krimen, not only under the revised penal code, but also under RA 9262 o yung Anti-Violence Against Women and Their Children or VAUSI Law. Alam na po natin na ang illicit affair could lead to a criminal prosecution for adultery or concubinage under the revised penal code. Na-discuss ko na po yung pagkakaiba ng adultery sa concubinage sa video na to sana po ay panoorin po ninyo. Very recently or nito lamang po March 1, 2023 ay pinagtibay po ng Korte Suprema ang hatol na guilty sa isang akusado for violation of Section 5 paragraph I of RA 9262 on the ground of psychological violence committed against the wife and their child. Ito po ay dahil sa pangangaliwa o marital infidelity. Si XXX at si AAA po ay ikinasal noong December 29, 2006. Si XXX po yung husband at si AAA naman yung wife. Huwag po kayong magtaka kung bakit letters ang ginagamit instead na real names ng mga parties. It has been the policy of the Supreme Court not to disclose the real names of the parties in the decisions sa mga ganitong kaso to protect the privacy especially of the victims. Dahil sa hirap ng buhay ng ibang bansa sa si AAA upang magtrabaho, pumunta siya ng Singapore noong 2008. In 2015, nalaman ni AAA na si XXX pala was already in a romantic relationship with another woman. Nag-message pa nga itong si XXX kay AAA na wag na itong makipag-communicate sa kanya. It was proven nga naman na habang nagtatrabaho si AAA sa Singapore, nagkaroon ng relasyon itong husband niya with CCC at nagbunga ang kanilang illicit affair, meaning nagkaroon pa sila ng anak. At hindi naglaon, pinatira niya na rin yung kanyang kabit sa kanilang tirahan kung saan din nakatira yung 9-year-old daughter nilang mag-asawa, si BBB. Ang mas masakit po kasi doon sa nangyari is that maliban sa pangangaliwa ng husband na gawa pa ng husband ng kabit nito na galitin o inisin yung asawang nagtatrabaho sa ibang bansa sa pamamagitan ng text messages. Ito po yung mga palitan nila ng text messages as quoted by the Supreme Court in its decision. Parihong convicted sa Regional Trial Court at sa Court of Appeals ang akusado. I'm referring to the husband. The reason why na umapila siya sa Supreme Court. And guess what? Convicted pa rin siya sa Supreme Court. Ang sabi ng Supreme Court, ito po yung mga elements ng violation of Section 5, Paragraph I ng RA 9262. Una, the offended party is a woman and or her child or children. Ikalawa, the woman is either the wife or former wife of the offender or is a woman with whom the offender has or had a sexual or dating relationship or is a woman with whom such offender has a common child. As for the woman's child or children, They may be legitimate or illegitimate or living within or without the family abode. So, pwede pong maging liable for violation of RA 9262 kahit na hindi kasal. Kahit na sila ay nasa isang sexual or dating relationship lamang or kahit na annulled or nullified na yung marriage nila. Ikatlo, the offender causes on the woman and or child mental or emotional anguish. Ito yung pinahirapan siya mentally and emotionally. Ano ba yung anguish? It means pain, grief, heartache, or extreme sorrow. At ikaapat, the anguish is caused through acts of public ridicule or humiliation, repeated verbal and emotional abuse, denial of financial support or custody of minor children, or access to the children, 
or similar to such acts or omissions. Bago po makonvict ang isang akusado, kailangan may proof ng dalawang indispensable elements na ito. First, psychological violence as the means employed by the perpetrator consisting of any acts enumerated in Section 5, Paragraph I, or similar acts. And second, the mental and emotional suffering or damage sustained by the offended party. Sa kasong ito po, sinabi ng Supreme Court na napatunayan ng prosecution ang mga elements ng crime na ito. Nandun po ang first at second elements dahil ang mga offended parties o biktima ay ang asawa at ang anak ng akusado. Ang marriage certificate nila ang nagpapatunay na sila ay kasal. At ang certificate of live birth naman ni BBB ang nagpapatunay na anak nga nila si BBB. According to the Supreme Court, napatunayan din ng prosecution ang fourth at fifth elements ng crime. Base sa mga testimonya ng wife at ng anak nila, the offender o yung akusado caused on the woman and the child mental or emotional anguish through acts of public ridicule or humiliation, repeated verbal and emotional abuse, denial of financial support, or custody of minor children, or access to the children or similar to such acts or omissions. In its decision, the Supreme Court went on to explain kung ano ang psychological violence and I quote, Psychological violence is an element of violation of Section 5, Paragraph I, just like the mental or emotional anguish caused on the victim. Psychological violence is the means employed by the perpetrator, while mental or emotional anguish is the effect caused to or the damage sustained by the offended party. To establish a psychological violence as an element of the crime, it is necessary to show proof of commission of any of the acts enumerated in Section 5, Paragraph I or similar such acts. And to establish mental or emotional anguish, it is necessary to present the testimony of the victim as such experiences are personal to this party. At sinabi rin ng Supreme Court na marital infidelity is one of the forms of psychological violence. The decision reads, Marital infidelity is one of the forms of psychological violence. The prosecution in this case was able to satisfactorily establish petitioner's marital infidelity, his cohabitation with CCC, who even bore him a child, and his abandonment of AAA. BBB's psychological trauma was evident when she wept in open court upon being asked to narrate petitioner's infidelity. In particular, BBB explained that she was deeply hurt because her father had another family and loved another woman other than her mother, AAA. I hope na may napulo tayong aral sa kasong ito. I would like to hear your thoughts and reactions sa comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, sana po ay mag-subscribe po kayo and don't forget to hit that notification bell icon so that you will get notified of our future videos. Always remember, ignorance of the law excuses no one from compliance therewith. I will see you in my next video. Ingat po kayo!